Hey there, Lacey here with The Sweet Pea Chef, and today we're gonna be doing a full seven-day meal plan intended to help with weight loss. This is gonna include breakfast, lunch, snacks, and dinners. It's gonna take us just under an hour to get all of this together and ready to go. This meal plan is gonna be super helpful if you're looking to lose weight, but you have a busy schedule, or if you just wanna have healthy recipes ready to go, ready to grab all week long in the fridge. All right, we got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. All right, so this meal plan is intended for a woman who's wanting to eat between 1,400 and 1,600 calories in a day in order to lose weight. Obviously, all body types are different and you might have to have a little bit more or less depending on your individual needs. For men, you're gonna wanna eat a little bit more calories than this and I'll show you how you can add in additional snacks during the day. I'm not a huge fan of calorie counting. I find it super tedious and you get caught up on feeling like you didn't do well at the end of the day when you have your calorie totals. So I wanna make this meal plan so that you don't have to worry about that. Follow these recipes, don't worry about the calories, just trust that they are definitely on a plan to help you lose weight. Because personally, if you're miserable and you're not enjoying your food, it just doesn't seem like a positive life to me. So I'm gonna make this enjoyable, tasty, and easy for you. So before we get started, you need to make sure that you have food meal prep containers because if you don't have anything to store them in the fridge, they're not gonna last all week. I'm using glass meal prep containers and also mason jars that seal. If you have just Tupperware or plastic containers, anything's fine. I just wanna make sure that you consider that before you have all this food because you don't want it to go to waste. Because we have a lot of food to prep and we wanna make sure we're as efficient as possible, I wanna start with our grains and our beans. So we're gonna start cooking our brown rice, our lentils, and our quinoa first. And then we're gonna do a bunch of different things and at the end I'm gonna show you how to put everything together. To start our brown rice, in a deep pot we're gonna add some brown rice followed by sea salt and low sodium chicken broth. We're gonna heat this over high heat until it starts to boil and then we're going to reduce it to a simmer and cover it and let it sit and simmering for about 20 to 30 minutes until the rice is fully tender and all of the liquid is absorbed. Then you can remove it from the heat and set it aside. To make our quinoa, we're gonna also put it into a deep pot. We're gonna add our uncooked quinoa, followed by sea salt and some water, and then we're gonna bring this to a boil. Then we're gonna reduce the heat to a medium to allow it to simmer, and we're gonna cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes until all the liquid is absorbed and the quinoa becomes fluffy and doubles or even triples in size. And then we're going to fluff it with a fork and then set it aside. Now we're gonna make our lentils. So add our dry lentils to a pot followed by water and make sure that the pot is large enough because the lentils will double or even triple in size. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then cover it, reduce to a simmer. We're gonna let this cook for about 15 to 20 minutes until the lentils have doubled or tripled in size and are tender. Be careful, you don't wanna overcook them. So then just remove them from the heat, drain them, rinse them and set them aside for later. Next, we're gonna be making a healthy beef and broccoli recipe, which I think is a really good option for meal prep because it reheats well, it's high in protein, it's tasty, and it's high in fiber. So we are gonna be using this recipe for four of our seven days of our meal prep. So in a large pan, we're going to add some olive oil and heat it over medium high heat. Then we're gonna add our thinly sliced flank steak. And we're gonna stir this together and cook it for about six to eight minutes until it's nicely browned and fully cooked on all sides. Then we're gonna remove the meat from the pan. We're still gonna use that pan, so set that meat aside for later. And in that pan, we're gonna add in some minced garlic, chopped shallots, and sliced green onions. We're just gonna cook for about a minute, stirring frequently until everything becomes fragrant. Then we're gonna add in our broccoli florets. I love a ton of broccoli in my healthy beef and broccoli recipe. We're gonna stir that together and cook it for about five minutes until the broccoli florets become a very bright green color. We don't wanna overcook them at this point because we're gonna be reheating them later during the week when we heat them up in the microwave. So we just wanna get them nice, tender, but not fully cooked. While the broccoli is cooking, we can go ahead and get our sauce made for this recipe. So in a medium mixing bowl, we're gonna add in some low sodium soy sauce, followed by coconut sugar, minced ginger, and crushed red pepper flakes. And then we're gonna stir all of this together to mix well. Then we're gonna add in some arrowroot starch to help thicken it, 
and some water and then stir this together again. We want to make sure that all the arrowroot starch is broken down so we don't have any clumps in there. If you need to use a whisk, that's helpful too. Now that our broccoli is ready, we're going to add in our sauce and stir it all together. Cook it for about two to three minutes until it heats up and becomes thick. And we're going to return our cooked meat to the pan, stir it all together, and as you can see, this looks like a very tasty, healthy beef and broccoli recipe. So now we can just set this aside to cool before we can put it into our meal prep container. Next, we're going to be making a chicken cauliflower fried rice recipe that is going to be used for three of our lunches during the week. So we're going to heat a large pan over a medium-high heat, and then we're going to add in some sesame oil. We're going to add in a couple skinless, boneless chicken breasts, and we're going to season it with some sea salt and ground black pepper. And we're going to cook for about four to eight minutes on both sides, making sure that the chicken gets fully cooked and the outside gets nice and goldeny brown. Once the chicken is cooked through, we're going to remove it from the heat, allow it to cool for a few minutes, and then we're going to dice it into bite-sized pieces. And then we're going to set that aside. Next, in that same pan, we're going to add in some diced carrots, and we're going to stir them around until they become slightly tender. Then we're going to add in some low-sodium soy sauce, creamy peanut butter, and chili paste, and we're going to stir to combine. If you like to have your food a little bit spicier, you might want to add a little bit more chili paste at this time. If you don't like spice, maybe a little bit less. Then we're going to add in some frozen edamame, which is going to up the protein value of our fried rice followed by some minced garlic and sliced green onions. And we're gonna stir this together and heat it through. Next, we need to make some cauliflower rice to go into our cauliflower fried rice recipe. So we're gonna grab a head of cauliflower and we're gonna grate it up against a kitchen grater until it forms into little cauliflower rice pieces. You can also use a food processor if you want, or you can even buy rice cauliflower at the store and skip that whole step. Now we can add our riced cauliflower into the mixture and we're gonna stir it all together to get it fully incorporated. Then we're gonna cook it for a couple minutes to heat it through. Then return our cooked chicken to the pan and stir all of that together. Then we're gonna scooch everything to the side of the pan so that we have an empty side to make our eggs. Add our eggs into the side of the pan and we're gonna stir it on up and scramble them until they're fully cooked. I'm going to break it into a bunch of little pieces and incorporate that back into the rest of our cauliflower fried rice. And then that is how you finish off the cauliflower fried rice recipe. So we're going to just take this and we're going to remove it from the heat for a little bit. Then we can plate it and I'll show you how to do that too. Next we can get started on our roasted salmon and asparagus meal that's going to be a dinner of ours for three days. It's so easy. So start preheating your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we are going to line a rimmed baking sheet with tin foil. Adding the tin foil here isn't 100% necessary, but it will help with cleanup for sure. We're gonna arrange our three slices of salmon. I have them portioned out to be about six ounce pieces. So we're gonna put those along the center of our baking tray. Then we're gonna surround that with our fresh asparagus. Then we're gonna add some thinly sliced lemons on top of our salmon and then all around our asparagus so it adds a lot of flavor while it's roasting. In a small mixing bowl, we're gonna combine some olive oil, freshly squeezed lemon juice, sea salt, and ground black pepper, and then we're gonna pour this mixture all over the salmon and the asparagus. Then we're gonna lightly sprinkle some freshly grated Parmesan over all of this as well. If you're going dairy-free, you can either use nutritional yeast or you can just omit this step entirely. Now we're gonna place this into the oven and allow it to bake for about 10 minutes. Then we're gonna turn the oven to broil. And we're gonna broil for about five to seven minutes. This is gonna get a nice little crispy toastiness on the top of everything and then really finish everything off. Then remove it from the oven and set it aside to cool. So tasty. You'll notice we haven't had any salad recipes yet. That's because there's so much more to eating healthy than just eating salads. However, I am a big fan of salads, especially ones that are really flavorful and chock full of protein and fiber, which is what we're gonna make right now. We're gonna make a large kale and quinoa salad with a lemon vinaigrette that is just so tasty. So we have our quinoa cooked from before and we have our lentils cooked from before, so we don't have to worry about that piece. So to make our dressing, we are going to combine freshly squeezed lemon juice, lemon zest, some raw honey, Dijon mustard, sea salt, ground black pepper, and olive oil. 
and then we're gonna whisk all this together until it's really fully mixed together. To prep the kale for the salad, in a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add our kale, and then we're gonna toss in a little bit of olive oil. Then, using your fingers, we're gonna go around and kind of massage the olive oil into the kale. Believe it or not, this makes a huge difference when you're eating your kale salad because it doesn't feel like you're just chewing on hay. Instead, the kale is nice and tender and it's much easier to eat and then later digest. So it's definitely a good idea to do this step. Totally recommend it. Plus, this is one of the steps where I buy pre-cut kale pieces rather than de-stemming and doing all that stuff with the kale. It's just so much easier to do and it saves a ton of time. So if you're like me and you wanna make this as fast as possible but you still wanna eat healthy, definitely go for pre-cut items because that's gonna save a lot of time, especially when you're meal prepping. Now to assemble our tasty salad, we're gonna add our cooked quinoa, cooked lentils, our massaged kale, garbanzo beans, diced cucumber, diced carrots, grape tomatoes, finely diced red onion, and some raw sunflower seeds. We're gonna to toss all of this together to fully combine. Then we're gonna drizzle over that delicious lemon vinaigrette over the top, and then we're gonna to toss it again to fully coat. This salad is so dang good. It's just ridiculously tasty and filling and high in protein. It's just the master of all salads, so I hope you like it too. Next, we can get started on prepping our breakfast for the week. I like to alternate between overnight oats and a smoothie each morning in this meal plan because I like to change things up. We're looking for about 400 calories for breakfast. So if you want to check out my blog, I have tons of chia puddings, egg muffins, smoothie recipes, protein pancakes. All of those would be really good options for a breakfast here. I love overnight oats and smoothies, so that's what we're doing in this meal plan. So for our overnight oats, we're gonna be making a dark chocolate peanut butter overnight oats because it tastes indulgent even though it's healthy and it's filling and there's just something about eating chocolate while you're losing weight that is just winning at the world. So that's what we're making for that. So we're gonna add some bananas to a blender followed by dark cocoa powder, some natural creamy peanut butter, pure maple syrup, vanilla extract, and some unsweetened almond milk. Then we're gonna blend all this together until it's really smooth. Then we're gonna add in our rolled oats into the blended mixture. We're not gonna blend at this point, we're just gonna stir it together with a spoon. I'm a big fan of not making a huge mess while I'm doing meal prep, so this cuts down on at least one bowl we don't have to use. We're gonna divide this mixture into four mason jars because we'll be using it for four breakfasts. And then we're gonna seal the lid tightly and then place it in the fridge. Once it's fully set, which takes about six to eight hours or overnight, you can add a little bit of chopped peanuts and some chocolate morsels to the top to serve, which is a really tasty breakfast. For our smoothie, we're gonna be doing a mango spinach green smoothie, which is really easy to make and super yummy. So into three different mason jars that are freezable or into some freezable storage bags, we're gonna add in some mango chunks that are either fresh or frozen, followed by banana and some baby spinach and then we're gonna seal this on up and place it in the freezer. In the morning, when you're ready to make your smoothie, you're just gonna dump this into the kitchen blender, add a little bit of flax seed meal, some vanilla protein powder if you wanna add some extra protein, and then a little bit of unsweetened almond milk or coconut milk, or any milk really if you want. Then we're gonna blend that together and it's gonna make a really tasty smoothie. Our snacks for four of the days are gonna be fresh strawberries with some raw almonds. It's a very simple snack, but super tasty, and it takes a while to eat, so it feels like you're actually getting a nice large snack. Snacks are gonna be about 200 calories. If you're wanting to add more calories to this meal plan, you can always add in additional snacks that are about 200 calories. That's the best way, I find, to add in extra calories for the entire day if you're looking to do that. So into some mason jars or into some sealable plastic bags, we're gonna add in our raw almonds, and then we're gonna have our fresh strawberries. I wash my strawberries and dry them completely, and then I put them into my bags. I don't cut them yet because I find that that makes it so that they get too mushy, so I leave them whole until it's time to eat them. And if you don't like almonds, you can always replace it with some walnuts or cashews or pretty much any nut of your choice. Our snack for the other three days of our meal plan is gonna be some fresh veggies with some hummus. This is a really tasty snack. 
and you can either make your own hummus, which I can share the recipe for you for that in the description below, or you can click on the screen for that, or you can use a store-bought hummus. Just make sure it has very simple ingredients. We're gonna add our hummus to the bottom of our mason jar, and then I have sliced carrots and cucumbers that I put into the top. You can use any fresh veggies that you want. This is a very healthy, tasty snack. So I could also do some celery or you could add in some red bell peppers or anything like that. You just want to have it in there ready to go and not having to put it all together when it's time to eat a snack. It's gonna make it easy, grab and go snack. Some other snack ideas could be a avocado toast option or some hard boiled eggs popcorn, the list is really endless. You could make some energy balls, just anything that's gonna be between 200 and 300 calories for a serving. And anything that you're happy to eat and you wanna have as a snack is a good idea. All right, we've made everything, so now it's time to pack everything up and put it into our meal prep containers. So let's start with our quinoa and kale salad. I like to add this to a one quart mason jar because it stores easily and then it's easy to just dump out into a plate or I can just eat it right out of the mason jar. Um, so we're just gonna divide that mixture into our mason jar salads and then put a lid on them and then put them in the fridge. Then for our healthy beef and broccoli, we're gonna add it to about two thirds of one of our meal prep containers. And then on the other part, we're gonna add in our steamed brown rice, which is gonna be super tasty. I like to top it off with a few extra sliced green onions and then that one is good to go. This meal is roughly 500 calories and is gonna make a really tasty dinner for four of our nights. For our cauliflower fried rice, we're gonna add that to our mason jar, and then we're gonna add a little bit of fresh snap peas to the side. I like having a little bit of extra crunch and not just having just a bowl of one thing. I like to have a little bit of a variation for extra crunch and flavor and texture. This is gonna be our lunch for three of the days, and it is about 400 to 500 calories, so it's very tasty. Next, we're gonna put our salmon meal into our meal prep containers. So we're gonna line the bottom of our meal prep container with our cooked asparagus, and then we're gonna top our salmon on top. If after eating this, you find that you're still a little bit hungry, you can add in a little bit of, of cooked quinoa to this. That would be a really good option. We already have the quinoa cooked, so you definitely wanna make sure that you're adding in a healthy addition into the meal so that you have a healthy, well-balanced meal rather than just snacking on anything later. To make this meal prep less boring and really fun and enjoyable to eat, I like to add variety to it. So I've divided days one, three, five, and seven as one meal plan and two, four, and six as a different meal plan. That way every other day you're getting a whole different meal plan so that you're excited every time to go back into the fridge. It makes just having this meal plan so much easier and more enjoyable. So for days one, three, five, and seven, you're gonna start off the morning with a chocolate peanut butter overnight oats for breakfast the quinoa and kale salad for lunch. Your snack is gonna be strawberries and raw almonds. And then your healthy beef and broccoli recipe with brown rice for dinner. On days two, four, and six, you're gonna start off your morning with a mango green smoothie for breakfast. For lunch, you'll have chicken cauliflower fried rice with snap peas. Your carrot sticks and cucumber sticks with hummus for your snack. And then for dinner, you have the roasted salmon with asparagus. I hope you like all of these recipes. They're the recipes I use to lose 60 pounds after having my kiddos, and it just makes it so easy if you're eating food you enjoy. So definitely, I hope you enjoy these recipes too. And remember that everybody loses weight differently and everybody has a little bit of a different need for calories. If you're working out, for example, you might wanna increase a little bit so you have more protein for muscle gain, or if you just are getting too full and it's too much food for you, you don't have to force yourself to eat everything. Everybody's a little bit different and that's what makes weight loss a challenge, but also an interesting journey. So for all of these recipes, you have the ingredients listed below in the description, and then you can also head on over to my blog where you can get a full printout of all the recipes, all the instructions, pictures and all sorts of helpful stuff as well. So now for the next week, you don't have to calorie count, you don't have to plan ahead, you just have to make these meals and you are set for the entire week. We got this done in just under an hour and we have so much food in the fridge, ready to go, ready to eat and enjoy. I've done all the hard work for you. All you gotta do is eat the food, lose the weight and feel great about the food you're eating. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to give me a thumbs up on the video and to comment and let me know which recipe looks the most amazing to you that you wanna eat first. And I will see you next time. Good luck with your meal plan. See you later, bye-bye.